Today, there are multitudes of Christians who harbor a love for my people in their hearts, and I thank God for those Christians and for their love. They love us, they want to bless us, and they want to pray for us. But this raises a question, of course. How should Christians love my people? How should they bless us? How can they most effectively pray for us? We can learn much from the example of the Apostle Paul. How did Paul love my Jewish people? Listen to what he wrote in Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. He said, I'm telling the truth in the Messiah. I'm not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul loved us with an anguished love. Why the anguish? Because of our separation from God. Despite our national election to serve the Lord as a kingdom of priests, Paul understood that we were individually separated, cut off from God. We needed to be saved. Yes, we have a zeal and a passion for God, but not according to knowledge, Paul says. For though we pursued a law of righteousness, we did not attain it, because we pursued it not by faith, but as if it were by works. We stumbled over the stumbling stone, Paul says. He loved us with a sacrificial love. He wrote, I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ. He loved us so much that if it were possible, he would forfeit his own relationship with God if it would bring about the salvation of his people. I know of only two other people in Scripture who possessed such a deep, such a profound love for us. Moses, who cried out to God after our transgression with the golden calf, Lord, forgive this people, or else blot me out of your book of life. And then there's Yeshua, Jesus, who did forfeit his relationship with the Father for the sake of his own people as well as for the whole world. He became sin who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. Paul loved us so deeply that he was willing to be cursed and cut off from the Messiah if that would bring us into a correct relationship with the Lord. And Paul loved us with an active, vocal love. Because he loved us, he could not be silent. Because he loved us, he proclaimed the good news whether we wanted to hear it or not. Because he loved us, he implored us, take heed so that the things spoken of in the prophets may not come upon you, he said to us. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel and perish. How did Paul bless my Jewish people? He blessed us by giving us the gospel. He blessed us by giving you the gospel in order to provoke us to jealousy. He said, I magnify my ministry that I might move my fellow countrymen to jealousy and save some of them. And he exhorts you to provoke us to jealousy as well. But what makes us jealous? Your lifestyle? Your culture? Your conduct? No. What makes us jealous is who and what you claim to have. The certainty of the forgiveness of your sins, the comfort of God's presence now and forever, the confidence of knowing His plan and purpose for your life, the reality of a vibrant, living relationship with our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But we can't be jealous of what you possess unless you tell us what you possess. And how did Paul pray for us? Listen to Romans 10, 1. Paul said, My heart's desire and my prayer for God to them, for the Jewish people, is for their salvation. He prayed for our salvation. That was Paul's burden for our people. And since his words were inspired by the Holy Spirit, 
then we know that this is God's burden as well. Do you love us? Do you want to bless us? Do you want to pray biblically for us Jews? Then love us the way Paul loved us, with an anguished, sacrificial, vocal love. Any love that falls short of sharing the good news is an incomplete, deficient love. Bless us the way Paul blessed us. He blessed us with the gospel message. He blessed us by provoking us to want what he possessed and what he gave you. Pray for us the way Paul prayed for us. He prayed for our salvation. And he exhorted believers to pray for him so that he might proclaim the good news boldly, he said, as I should. Be imitators of me, he wrote, as I am an imitator of Christ, whom we know shared the gospel with his chosen people incessantly wherever he ministered in his Father's name. And as you love, bless, and pray for us like Paul, then may God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, the Messiah Jesus, the Messiah Yeshua.